Hey everyone, Morgan here. So we're on page 9 and 10 of the reactions outline for AP, and we're going to be reviewing net ionic equations for precipitation reactions. And these were covered last year in honors, but I need to make a big deal about this for you. Every year, the chief reader for the AP Chem exam holds a debriefing of what they learned at the grading of the exam. And uh, I attend it every year. It's usually held at the uh, summer uh, you know, chemistry conferences. This year was held online. And he'll take out a list, he or she, depending on what year it is, and they take out a list of, here are the biggest problems. Here's what you really need to work on with your students. And it never fails that every year they bring up you have to teach the concept of a net ionic equation. And it turns out that you saw them on page 8 also with acid and base reactions. Okay, They're not just for precipitation reactions. So you need to really pay attention to these. Okay, Now for precipitation, I want you to think of it as a double replacement reaction. And when you look at the products, you need to know some solubility rules. Don't panic that you have to memorize this entire table. You don't, okay? Because if you know some of the rules, you know the others by default. If you know who's soluble, by default you know who's insoluble and vice versa, okay? So, AB plus CD. Guy one, girl one, guy two, girl two. Switch partners like at a square dance. Guy one is now dancing with girl two. Guy two is now dancing with girl one. So if NaCl and AgNO3 switch partners, Ag and Cl have hooked up, and Na and NO3 have hooked up. And if you need to practice your formula writing, print out those grids from last year and do that again. Okay? So when presented with the reactants, First, we'll do the molecular equation, which is NaCl aqueous plus AgNO3 aqueous to give us AgCl plus NaNO3, and we include states of matter. Nitrates are always soluble. Oh, and group ones are always soluble. Either way, that's soluble. Now, chlorides are mostly soluble except with silver, lead, and mercury ions, okay? That's a solid. Silver precipitates with just about everything, okay? Only silver nitrate is soluble. We mentioned that in the QA lecture last week, okay? So, what are we really looking at here? Does NaCl aqueous really exist? No. It would be Na plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous because they're strong electrolytes, plus Ag plus aqueous, plus NO3 minus aqueous, and then I would have the AgCl solid it would be together because it is a solid, and I'd have the Na plus aqueous and the NO3 minus aqueous. That's what the complete ionic equation would look like. Okay. They should be balanced. Now just like in algebra, if something is on the left side of the equation and the exact same thing is on the right side of the equation, it can be canceled. I tend to overemphasize when canceling, drawing really large lines. And those ions would be referred to as spectator ions. So what am I left with? I'm left with what actually changes, which would be the net ionic equation. Now most people are pretty good at net ionic equations for precipitation reactions. But they also happen in acid-base and in redox, so we need to practice them across the board. 
Okay, that's the end of page 9. Let's move over to page number 10. All right, let me do one more of them here for you. I, in general, don't do the complete ionics, and that's up to you. When you're first learning how to do these, I strongly recommend that you do them. But then, once you get used to them, I think it's okay for you to do the molecular and the net. Let's do our partner exchange here. BASO4 and NACL. We're going to need to put a 2 there. Group 1 sodium, so it's soluble. That makes it aqueous. Barium sulfate's a solid. That's a very famous precipitate in the medical world. You actually have to drink barium sulfate when you get a lot of CAT scans, MRIs, gastrointestinal exams. They use it as a contrast when they're doing the exam, when they're doing the medical imaging. Even though the barium's highly toxic, okay, it is not soluble. Your body doesn't absorb it, and you just poop it out later on or that day or the next day. Okay, so again, make sure you get your ratios right. Have a periodic table handy. Know that barium's a plus two. Did I mention you need to know your polyatomic ions? Sulfate's a minus two. All right, so the net ionic would be Ba2 plus aqueous plus SO4 to a minus aqueous to give us BaSO4 solid. Okay? All right, so at this point, what I'd really like you to do is the next nine questions. Hit pause, work on them for 20 minutes, okay? Then tune back in and we'll check and see how you did. Okay, welcome back. Let's see if you did a good job or not. Let's do our partner exchange here. We're gonna have PBCL2 and HNO3. There's gonna be a two there. This is aqueous. This is gonna be a solid, the chlorides with those big three metals we talked about. So we have PB2 plus aqueous plus two Cl minus aqueous to give us PBCL2 solid. Okay, here we're going to have AG3PO4, so I need a 3 in front of that, and NANO3, so I'm going to have to have a 3 in front of that. This is aqueous. Sodium's in group 1, or nitrate in group either way. Oop, it's got silver in it. That's going to precipitate. So that means 3 Ag plus aqueous plus a PO4 3 minus aqueous gives me Ag3 PO4 solid. Okay? Those ratios are really important. Okay. Partner exchange, FeOH sub 3 plus NaNO3. Three of those. Looks like I'm going to need a three up front there. Well, again, this is going to be aqueous. Hydroxides are pretty soluble with group 1 and group 2 mostly. But they're not so soluble with transition metals. And I'm dealing with the transition metal here. So... That's going to be my solid. Fe3 plus aqueous plus 3OH minus aqueous to give me FeOH sub 3 solid. Okay. Now, in the next one, we're getting a little trickier with the ratios. I have NaCl plus Fe2. S3. So I'm going to need to put a 3 here, and I'm going to need to put a 2 there. That means I'm actually going to end up with a 6 there. Wow. Okay. Now, group 1 sodium, that means this is aqueous. Iron with sulfide, no, that's going to be a solid. So Fe3 
plus. Now Fe3 plus, there's going to be two of those based on my balancing. And then for the sulfide, S2 minus, there's going to be three of them. Aqueous to give me Fe2, S3 solid. All right. Ni, OH is sub 2, and K2, SO4. Throw in the two there. Group one, so that's aqueous. Again, hydroxides with the transition metal, that's going to be a solid. Okay, so uh, balanced, yep. Good Ni2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous to give me NiOH sub 2 solid. Okay. Now in my next one, I get AGI and KNO3. And immediately group 1 or nitrate. And silver, that's easy to spot. That's going to be the solid. So I have Ag plus aqueous plus I minus aqueous to give me AgI. And that's going to be a solid. All right. Now, in this next one, I'm ending up with NiNO3 sub 2 and HCl, there's going to be a 2 in front of that there. That's a strong acid. That's completely dissociated. Group 1, a lot of different ways to know it's dissociated. But this is a nitrate. That's also dissociated. You know what? This is a no reaction. A precipitate does not always form. It does most of the time, but not always. Okay. Now, on this next one, I recognize the two precipitates form. A double precipitate. What a pain, huh? net ionic equation is kind of long. <laughs> okay. Now, this last one is a real favorite of mine. I discovered this on an, it was a Chem Olympiad, a national exam, Chem Olympiad. And I immediately spotted this precipitate and I went to write aqueous and I realized it's aqueous, but hold on. Remember yesterday, remember looking at stuff about the weak and strong acids? This is a weak acid. It's associated. That means it doesn't come apart. That means I have to include it in my equation because it's changed. So my net ionic is Pb2 plus aqueous plus C2H3O2 minus aqueous, there's two of those, plus 2H plus, so two there, I'm gonna balance this out, aqueous plus two Br minus aqueous to give me PbBr2 solid plus two HC2 H3O2 and I'm writing aqueous but the reality is it is associated because it's a weak acid. Okay, hope you have been a little bit of a challenge for you. Okay, keep practicing these if necessary. Go on to the uh, honors homework from last year, print it out again and run through it one more time. Okay, thanks for tuning in. This is Morgan, signing off.